Okay, we'll, find it. we'll go with that. So on the screen, I just uh, pulled up the Canadian dollar. I just wanted to start here real quick, only because uh, there's a decent little opportunity there. I don't know if anybody saw this trade, took this trade. Um, Canadian is falling from a little, just a little, not a big deal, just a little five-minute level. Uh, there's also a little level down here to keep an eye on at 94.97. So this is also the futures, but if you pull up this spot, you're going to get the same opportunity. All right, just going to be flipped over. Okay. So I wanted to go with, uh, let's start here. And I thought what we would do today is just keep it, you know, I've got a, I've got a list of markets next to me, um, but I'm totally open to looking at any markets. You want to look at, so I'll kind of do a little of both, um, and we'll go from there. Now, why did I bring up the dollar again? Um, let me see here. There was a shorting opportunity. Maybe it's on a smaller time frame. Let's see. Mm-hmm. I'll just put that. I thought I had something. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess we'll come back to that. Uh, why don't we start with the S&P? Okay, here we go. Oh, wrong one. Let me pull this one up. So just full disclosure, the only positions that uh, I have at the moment are two uh, two short positions in the in the, uh, the world of equity index markets. Uh, that's all I'm in at the moment. Um, okay, let's take a look. Let's start with the larger time frame. So what's real nice now is we have uh, quality levels sitting above and below. So there are more levels on the chart than you, than you see here, but I wanted to show you the, the larger time frame levels that are closest to current price. This does two things for us. So obviously, uh, the main thing is it, it shows us what the larger where we are with regard to the larger time frame supply and demand curve. So this offers us our big picture opportunities, but also tells us what we should be doing in the small time. We're kind of right in the middle right now. Um, if you're in the mastermind community, a low of the day in the S&P today, we're right into our uh, mastermind grid level, the demand level down there for, for uh, I don't know, three, four point bounce. You can do that uh, when you're in the middle of the curve and you have small time frame, fresh levels. So no need to, to uh, stay there too long. As I come down to smaller time frames, Okay. So if you're in the uh, trade station webinars on Friday, this is the level we were looking at uh, the other day. Came down into, we didn't quite make it up to the supply level. Um, we would not take this level again. However, sitting right below this, uh, it's easy to miss. But there's a level sitting right down here. Sitting just below that level, uh, about 16.28. So what's neat is, and then, you know, there's this rally base uh, drop up here, and there's a drop base rally below. Great levels, we're just not there yet. So once, uh, you know, if and when this low right here of 16, call it 31, is taken out, most people are going to get pretty bearish. All right, so when most people sell, you know, at or near a demand level, um, most of the time that's going to cause prices to turn home. Okay. All right, let's uh, let's keep going so that don't so don't forget about that level below. Um, that's a key level because I, most people are not going to see that. Your competition's not going to most of your competition is not going to see that. When we come down to the smaller time frames here. Uh, let me just blow this up a little bit. 
There's really not a whole lot uh, down here. You'll see if I put horizontal line in here, it's almost not even worth doing because there's just uh, there's not much there. If you were trading this morning and looking for something else to do today, uh, I, I would say you're just going to have to hold off a little bit or wait for a rally, uh, you know, quite a bit higher. The, the two, uh, you know, two kind of easier plays already happened, obviously. And those were, uh, one of those was level four off the grid there. Okay. Yeah, gotcha. Alif, uh, so good, good comment there. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you were kind of honest there, or were honest. And yeah, so again, I think, you know, once you get this, you'll appreciate that it's not that simple. You don't, uh, you don't want it to be that simple. You know, um, uh, I'll take you over to a couple trades that I'm in at the moment. If you want to see those real quick and then we'll move on. So, uh, this one actually came within 15 cents of stopping out yesterday, believe it or not. Um, not that I'm into trading stocks, I'm really not, but, uh, when it comes to options, I'll do them in the, um, mainly ETFs and some big stocks. Uh, so, I'll put this position on Friday, uh, up into here. Yesterday, uh, added to the position, put the second half of the position on, and, uh, now it's paying off nicely, but, uh, literally came within 15 no, less than 15 cents. The stop was at 77.35, so, close one, close one, seven cents. I didn't, now it's working out. It's a bearish options, options position. And then, uh, this one as well. I haven't even looked at this yesterday, yet today. Uh, same thing here. This one, if you look at the very large time frame, okay. came right back up to this high. Um, but if you go down to this daily chart here, let me move these things a little. Okay. Notice this level over here. This is the uh, this is the level that um, traded off of. Again, this one just another options position, uh, bearish. No, nothing short. These are not short term day trades. These are all longer term stuff. Okay. All right. Uh, wow, this one had a pretty wild day today so far. I didn't look at it. Um, coming back down now. And uh, this one doesn't have as much as big of a profit zone as the QQQ trade does, but uh, it's okay. Yeah, let's go back to Forex. Uh, reason why I was kind of let me go to uh, reason why I was kind of staying away from Forex is only because not staying away from it. There just wasn't a lot of opportunity. There, I, I found tons more opportunity in uh, other markets. Let's go over here. I just want to see this. Oh, yeah, I don't know what I have there. Uh, sure. Let me scroll up and see what markets you wanted to look at. Or if you don't mind typing again, I'll just start one more ball. Um, sure. Yeah, you go definitely let me look at gold. And, uh, why don't we start with the Aussie dollar? Let me just let the charts catch up here. We'll stick with the uh, FX for a little bit. Okay. And then we'll come back to gold. Uh, one second for the chart to catch up. Yeah, um, so for those, those two that I just showed you, you know, I'm, I'm for, you know, I keep it kind of pretty simple. Short term income, I'm trading futures of Forex. And for the, on the long term wealth bucket, I'm doing stock options. Okay. Um, in some of those cases, some of the ones I showed you, selling premium, but then using that premium to buy, uh, for example, buy puts. Right? Some of those calls, use the cash to, uh, from that, buy puts. 
little little more complicated than that, but, but nothing uh, nothing too exotic. Just again betting on the direction. All right, if we look at the Aussie dollar, um, not a whole lot to to look at here. If we come down to this time frame right here, um, you know, there's good levels to point out, but we're not close to any of those. Let me take this one to a 30 minute trouble we'll work our way down from there. Yeah, there's really nothing, uh, yeah, I wouldn't touch the Aussie dollar until just a bit higher. Yeah, I just don't see a whole lot to do here, except, you know, continue to short rallies. All right. Here, we can, let's go down to the daily, though, um, and look for demand level. Sorry about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a horizontal it's not a line right here at the bottom. And we're going to scroll left. And this is where price comes in. So when I go down to that, because that's not fresh demand, you see what I mean? There's there's not a whole lot down here. You really have to do that on a smaller time frame. Do that once, and then you'll, you'll see where the buying opportunity is in, in this market. I'm just to get a horizontal line here right at the bottom. Now scroll left. Uh, there's that line again. No demand there, right? Or, or not any fresh demand, so days in. And then we'll continue to scroll left till we hit that black line. We're looking for the, uh, the demand level below. Right, so there, you see, you see what I'm saying? So um, here's where we're kind of going to find that that, that uh, demand level below for price. But we're not close to that, so I didn't want to kind of waste uh, not waste your time, but spend your time looking at levels like this that are pretty far. So low 87s. Okay. Um, let's see, I'm looking back at the chat. Yeah, so weekly demand. A seven seventy. Let's see how I look for you. Oh, so you're saying this pivot low right here? No, well we would not call that a fresh demand level. No. Um we wouldn't even call that a demand level, right? Because it's already it's already to pull back into this stuff to the left. When we went back and looked, you saw that was just a pivot low. Remember, pivot lows and pivot highs in and of themselves are not fresh demand levels, they're supply levels. That's uh, probably the biggest trap that'll get you. So be, make sure you understand that before you start trading this with real money. Okay. So I'm going to look at this market. I saw a couple of you people. A little more opportunity here. You know, kind of clear supply above, uh, some, some uh, clear demand below. Uh, yeah, Maurice, um, and that's kind of a good way of putting it. And that's because people get, you know, they get confused by the whole fresh versus not fresh concept. Um, and that's not such a bad thing. I mean, again, you'll you'll appreciate, once you get good at this, that, um, you know, you get that, Little, little confusion. Um, okay, let's go to the daily. You know, we've got this, uh, this, this pivot here is right into this little guy. I'll say really big rally, right? Next level sitting below comes in about 85 to 80. So at the rate the market is moving, you know, it may not be too long. Uh, the last few days we've just rallied up to this rally-based drop supply. 
Now we're coming down. We go down a time frame. Uh, let's go one more time frame. Sorry about that. This one. This one should offer some very tradable levels. Uh, I think this one would be fine. Just I was just kind of looking to see if it's really a fresh level. And we'll, we would definitely take that. Take it right up here because that's where the or that, that's kind of the or can the decline. That's kind of where prices fell from. It didn't fall from the bottom of that level. If you look at that little red candle there, they fall from right there. So that's uh, 87.54. This rally up there didn't quite take. Uh, you know, prices all the way up there. So trade up that high into this level that looks really good. That's something that would be pretty exciting. Okay. Uh, McFry, no, um, no, I think you're a little confused there. Let me just explain. Yeah, so rally based drop, the drop based rally, totally fine. That is a pivot high and pivot low. But what I just said a minute ago is our, a pivot high and pivot low in and of itself is not a fresh level. You need to make sure it's a fresh level. So, yeah, no, nothing's changed. In fact, nothing's changed since I uh, started trading. I, haven't, I don't think I've ever changed one little basket of strategy. Mm. Um, let's see. So watch that level sitting just above. That looks really good. Another little level sitting just above that. Um, I'm glad you brought this this uh, market up because I didn't see this before, and I just in the majors I just didn't see a lot. I saw there's a lot of opportunity, but nothing that close from the current price. Okay. Okay. So we've got those two levels above. Uh, you'll see those nicely on a 30 minute chart, 60 minute chart, any of those kind of bigger intraday time frames. Now, if I put a horizontal line at the bottom, let's find a little, uh, something below. The reason why we always use that word fresh is because, remember, these levels represent, there's no demand here, so let me go down. These levels represent buying and sell orders. So you want to be buying and selling at those levels when there's lots of buying and sell orders, not, not when those orders are, are gone or used up. Let's go back until we find out the 8650. Nope. There we go. So, you know, you probably have to wait till about 86.30 down here, the origin of this. All right. So all that tells you is, well, we should, you know, the fact that we're finding demand significantly lower now just tells you these supply levels are that much stronger. It's exactly what's happened over the past few days in the equity index markets. No clear demand below, at least not near current price, <clears throat> and some key supply levels above. Okay. You see, sure, we'll look at the UC that the, I'm assuming you want to look at the futures. Uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, we'll get gold after that. Yeah, I'm never sure, you know, I always want to try to keep it to FX in here. You know, we are mainly looking at FX markets, but uh, myself, I would, I would certainly be looking at other futures markets more. You know, uh, I'll be honest with you, the euro, I just didn't see a, a whole lot. We did just uh, get a pretty big move over the past uh, 30 minutes, so let's see what we have here. Maybe things have changed. You say you're getting these kind of wide and whippy moves. It's because there's nothing fresh here. Does everybody understand that? reason why you're getting these big, wide, wide and whippy moves is because you're, there's no fresh levels here. 
Right. So why do your moves are great if you're in a, but you want to get in them, you know, at the turn, which is, which is usually, you know, it's a little fresh level. So, okay, let me take this down to a five minute actually. And let's scroll. Uh, you know, before I do that, let me actually go down a little bit smaller. Since this is the uh, futures, you know, I, I can, I'll trade the Euro futures off a of one minute chart. Uh, two minute chart, five minute chart, I don't care. I'm just saying you can do that in futures. You can, you can go down to small time frames and you can do blah, 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 blah. You can, and if I can trade in the spot. Uh, should the Euro come down to 33.50? I would get ready. If it came down to 3348, I would consider buying with a stop, you know, in the very low 40s. Uh, Alif, no, I, I would say, you know, your, your, your best trades are going to come from the drop based rally, rally based drop, because that's kind of really far out on the curve. Uh, I would look inside those, but make sure the first pullback and, and those are the price, there's still lots of orders there. Yeah, and then the rally based rally and drop based drop are probably in the middle of the move. Again, the key thing there is make sure they're fresh and make sure they're far apart from each other. So watch that level down there. And having said that, let me put a horizontal line here and we'll scroll back. If I can need to add some days. Okay, let me uh, scroll back and see what we find. Uh, ooh, not bad. Blow this up a little bit. Um, right in here, so this area in here uh, looks good. Certainly not a fresh level. Okay. But that area right there, we have seen one pullback. Uh, let's see if that's it. And uh, we see that first pullback price barely came back, uh, barely went into the level. Scrolling back to make sure it's fresh. It is. Okay. What was the highest one? Oh, we almost touched that level. All right. So uh, 134 to 134.06 is the range. Obviously, you have to have a stop above that. So this almost sets up as a bull trap. Meaning, if prices take out that high and get into the 134 area and go above it, even by a tick, well, a lot of people are going to get pretty bullish. So, watch that one. Uh, let's find another one, though. Put a horizontal line there to make it red. So I can recognize it. There it is. Into that area. Not fresh, not fresh. Go to that high. Um, no, yeah, I have to go higher. Now we're about 134.50, so I'm not going to go too high. Okay. Um, yeah, we just scroll back pretty far. Ah, uh, there it is. Ooh, great levels up here. Okay. So when you get above 134.60, key, key level, look at the time of day. Very key. All right, look at the time of day there. Uh, above 134.60, good stuff. 
Yeah, Muhammad, I would look at uh, the four-hour daily and weekly, and that's pretty much it. For the two trades I showed you earlier, I'm just looking at daily and weekly for that one thing else. Show you another one here that's kind of on the radar. I think this one's on the radar. Let's see. Yeah, so uh, USO, right? Oil, the ETF for oil. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, in the, uh, John Paul, in the, uh, yeah, the spot market, you know, you've got to leave a little bit for, a little wiggle room for the stop. Okay. Some of your best levels that a lot of people are going to see, you know, if a lot of people entering there, it's going to cause, you know, you're going to create the other side of, the, of your trade there. Um, let's say you're coming up to a supply level, if a lot of retail traders, you know, like yourself and, and anybody else wants them selling, you're forcing the brokers and banks to buy, right? So uh, sometimes, you know, that's why the levels will be fine. Like you're saying, it looks like you're saying most of the time levels are fine, but the uh, price will, you know, go through a teeny bit and then turn. Is that your main, the main issue there? Yeah, so, yeah. If, uh, okay, good. So, um, you know, a lot of that is the spot market, not the spot market. You know, the mechanics of the spot market. So you just have to leave a little more wiggle room for your, for your stop there. Okay, so USO has got this level up here with another level sitting above it. It's doing a lot of basing coming up here, but if you look at the Smaller time frames. Okay, let's take a gap up today. Um, hmm. Let's check this out. We have an entry like right here. Um, let me look left. I know this isn't an FX chart, but so it's gapping up to where it's at now. I was just filling that gap. Let's blow this one up. Uh, Kill, I see your, your question. How many, how many, how many pips above a level? Uh, you know, my kind of rule of thumb is, is whatever you're going to do in the future, double it on the spot. So if you're going to like, you know, two, two ticks above a level in the future, maybe go four to five in the spot. That's kind of my rule of thumb. So I want to see what this is, uh, camping up into. Uh, let's get some more days in here. This may be something we can jump on like now. Oh yeah, let's take a look at gold next. I forget about the wall. Yeah, I, there was a nice uh, monthly area there. Oh, this looks nice. Yeah, so this whole area right here. Let's take a look. Also a great level above it, right near just under 40, 39, 80. So I think we hit this level this morning. Uh, we're still sitting right in it, so, you know, if you're an options trader or just a trade US bill, I would take a look at that. I mean, there's, you know, there's room for it to fall down to 38 without too much trouble. Okay. Yeah, so this should be considered a novice gap, a gap in price after a move in price in the same direction as that move, whether it's into a supply level or demand level. 
Yeah, that's a novice cap that uh, I know the XLT is on my training cap. I mean, uh, probably one of, those, one of the XLT students' uh, favorite entry. All right, let me get these charts in order. Pull up uh, gold. Oh. Yeah, Bohas, I, I would suggest you, you, uh, I can certainly do that, but it's probably better that you watch some of the uh, archive webinars first, and then we can, you know, we'll probably come back with a lesson day the next time we do this. Uh, so there's gold on the monthly. It just came down to this big demand level, uh, turned higher. There it is on the weekly. Remember, we've got a few levels sitting on top of each other. Um, I think we talked about this last time. The level that we feel you know best about is this, this area right here. Uh, we're not there yet. Uh, we're not even 100% through this one yet, but uh, we'll see. Let's actually go down to a daily chart, though, and really plan this out. Um, this area up, I'm sorry, right up here. Uh, let's go down even further. Because I think we're going to be pretty precise here. Now, were you asking for GC or GLB? We could do this on either. I just want to make sure you do the one that you're looking for. Okay. GC. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Here's one, and then we'll go down a time frame and find a, another one. Okay. I don't know if we hit this yet. We may. Not yet. Almost. Just gonna have to be a little bit careful because hitting below is is all this stuff up here. But. Uh, this does not look like the greatest level because we have this wick right here to the downside. See that? Then we get this level up here, 131, about 14, So you're not that far. I mean, GC can get there pretty quick. Uh, really, if you want to keep it a little conservative, so I would look at 1432. Oh, we're not done. Let's, uh, let's keep looking at gold. I want to go down to a smaller time frame. You really want to get this right. You want to get them all right, but let's, let's do this. Yeah, Nico, I agree. It's not the best looking supply we've ever found. That's, that's another reason why I'm going on this one. Okay, I just want to, I'm not comfortable just leaving it in that time frame. So, that's, that's a lot of trading activity, not, not a little bit that area. <clears throat> you know, big picture, I'd be very surprised if it didn't turn up here. It's just when we come down to the smaller time frame, it, gets, it does get pretty ugly. Uh, the one level I would, uh, actually, I would be focused on, too, is this one right here. Okay, 1412. Yeah, 1460s. Great. I agree with you. Okay. 1460s, great. We're just, yeah, I agree with you, Luca, 100%. We're just, uh, we're not close to that. And you're likely to turn before, uh, good chance you're going to turn before that. If we come down here. Uh, watch, you know, it's going to be a great market because you've got two really nice demand levels now below. And you've got some really good supply levels above. Okay. So it's also a great market to trade option, options on. James, good idea there. Starting a little, uh, uh, little meetup. And James, well, you know, since you're kind of heading that up, if you have any questions, 
I'll feel free to send them to me and, and I can, uh, I'll do the best I can to, uh, help out. Okay. Yeah, so gold, uh, really nice levels below and decent levels above. Oh yeah, just shoot me an email if you have any questions. Let's see. There was another one here. Euro pound. Let's take a look. Let's see. S and P's down fifteen. Yes, it's down thirty one. Uh, Euro pound, yeah, you know, there's just not a lot. Of, I wish there was more opportunity. There is. I mean, there's plenty of opportunity, but nothing that's really close to current price. Um, let me do this. You see what I mean? Like, you don't really have any solid fresh demand below here, so you don't have any above. I would move on. This is not a market I would be trading at the moment. The, the problem with, uh, you know, when I saw that we had a session this morning, it's okay, great, you know, love the FX free session, but the fact that, uh, you know, yesterday was the day, yesterday was the big day to enter positions. Now today we're kind of in the middle of a move, you know what I mean? Yeah, let's pick one more market, uh, a shot yet, and then we'll, and we'll do that. Okay, there's one now. Uh, we're looking at Canadian. Um, Canada against the yen here. Sure, so here's one. Oh uh, yeah, Craig, it, it is coming soon. Uh, I was in a meeting the other day. They were kind of, everybody's kind of planning it out. So you'll, you'll get some information on that pretty soon. All right. So, uh, this market right now is, uh, has turned from a drop based strong rally. Great level there. Uh, the market turned higher. Brought prices up to the decline of drop based drop supply. That level is certainly not used up. All right, the chart tells us, suggested that uh, we could have a pretty good trade coming around the corner. So that comes in at uh, about, actually right at 92.80. The stop at uh, about 93. I don't think you would uh, need to go too, too much above that. Yeah, you can... Alif, you could certainly, I, I see why you're asking the question. Alif is saying, can we bring up the bottom line? Yeah, you probably want to bring it up to there. You certainly can. To me, the odds of cancers would score that level off pretty high, and I would be, uh, of course, where, where, you, where the lines are now is exactly where you, you want them, and now you've got it around the meat of the level. The only problem is, to me, it might be a little tough to get filled there. You know, if this thing is going to turn... It's probably going to turn just a touch before that. There's so much competition that's now there. So I would just be sensitive to that. All right, there's plenty of room on the downside. Nice bigger time frame, which means there's, uh, there's, there's room. Okay. Yeah, it looks okay. Uh, let's see. No demand in the four hour. Oh, uh, let's take a look. Well, yeah, it did come into this, came into this drop base rally demand, but, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's rallied already. You don't see it well on this time frame, but there was a pretty decent rally in there. And then if we look below that, there, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing super close so you get down to, uh, closer to 91. Right, right down in here. That's where the new, that's where the fresh demand is in large. More like 91, but we're not close to that at the moment. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, I see your comment there. Dollar demand, uh, gold near supply. Yeah, those, those correlations are key. Those big picture correlations. Uh, you know, we use them all the time. Um, when those markets are all, you know, those, those key correlated markets are into opposing fresh supply and demand levels at the same time, that's when you want to pay closest, you know, close attention. If I blow up the dollar, that didn't sound good. Um, the dollar needs to drop a little bit more. I will tell you though, the key level for the dollar is it's 81. Well, not even exactly more, 80, 98, 97. This area down here is the key level for the dollar. I'm just going to make it a little bit wider than, than I normally would because we're not looking to edit for it. And actually trade, we're looking at more of a reference point for another trade. I wouldn't focus on that too much. I would focus on more of the 80, 96, 97. Okay. Yeah, so when the dollar hits that and things like the euro and opposing currencies and, and commodity markets are into supply like gold, now you've got those key levels hitting opposing fresh supply and demand levels at the same time. That's a very high probability of that. So the only problem is it's not happening today. If I could change that, I would, but I can't. And, uh, oh, and with that, I see where the time is, is up. Uh, can you pretty quickly here? Let me throw my email address in here. That's side yeah, trading academy. Uh, next session, we'll make a lesson session uh, with, a, with a pretty important topic for you. And we'll also include some uh, trading application in there, too. So we'll learn the lesson. And then uh, trade the last one. Okay, hopefully that was helpful. And uh, again, shoot me an email if you can. Good to see everyone. Have a great day. Thanks again.